Hey everyone, hope you're having a great day. You're listening to the RX Daily Dose. Today's episode is being recorded for Monday, March 22nd, and I'm your host, Ian Parnagoni. We update this podcast for healthcare providers, medical professionals, and anyone who has an interest in drug updates. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe on all your favorite podcast platforms and social media, including iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and Instagram. All links can be found in the show notes below. So in today's episode, we'll be discussing the approval of Ponvori for multiple sclerosis and Chimirza, a new antibiotic for skin and soft tissue infections, including MRSA. As always, feel free to skip around. I'm going to include times in the show notes so you get the drugs that interest you. First up this week, the FDA approved Johnson & Johnson's Panesimod, which goes by brand name Ponvori, as an oral treatment for adults with relapsing forms of multiple sclerosis. This is yet another S1P modulator to enter the U.S. market, joining Novartis's Jelenia and its follow-on Mazent, as well as Bristol-Myers' newly approved Zyposia. The approval covers clinically isolated syndrome, relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis, and active secondary progressive MS. Multiple sclerosis is a potentially disabling disease of the brain and central nervous system. In MS, the immune system attacks the protective sheath, called myelin, that covers nerve fibers and causes communication problems between your brain and the rest of the body. Eventually, the disease can cause permanent damage or deterioration of the nerves. Signs and symptoms of MS vary widely and depend on the amount of nerve damage and which nerves are affected. Some people with severe MS may lose the ability to walk independently or at all, while others may experience long periods of remission without any new symptoms. There's no cure for multiple sclerosis, however, treatments can help speed recovery from attacks, modify the course of the disease, and manage symptoms. Treatment for MS includes a variety of different disease-modifying agents. Sphingosine 1-phosphate receptor modulators, more commonly referred to as S1P modulators, possess a unique mechanism of action as disease-modifying therapy for multiple sclerosis. Subtype 1 S1P receptors are expressed on the surfaces of lymphocytes and are important in regulating egression from lymph nodes. The S1P receptor modulators indirectly antagonize the receptor's function and sequester lymphocytes in lymph nodes. Gelenia was the first S1P agent approved in the U.S. in 2010, then more selective S1P receptor agents entered the market, including Mazent, Zyposia, and now Panvori. The approval was based on data from the two-year head-to-head Phase three clinical trial in which Ponvori demonstrated superior efficacy in significantly reducing annual relapses by 30.5% compared to Abagio in patients with relapsing multiple sclerosis. Over the study period, 71% of patients treated with Ponvori had no confirmed relapses, compared to 61% in the Abagio group. Ponvori was also superior to Obagio in reducing the number of new gadolinium-enhancing T1 lesions and the number of new or enlarging T2 lesions by 59% and 56% respectively. Lesions are identified using magnetic resonance imaging technology and are recognized as classic measures of MS pathology and can provide insights into disease activity and disease burden. But without other head-to-head studies, it becomes difficult to compare Ponvori's efficacy with its direct rivals in the S1P class. Zyposia, for example, got its FDA go-ahead in relapsing multiple sclerosis based on clinical data comparing it with Biogen's Avonex. But then again, Ponvori's rival list extends beyond the oral S1P class. Roach's CD20-targeted injectable Ocrevus 
is quickly establishing itself as the new MS leader, with 2020 sales of $4.6 billion, thanks to a 24% year-over-year growth. And Novartis just launched its rival CD20 therapy, Casimta. The CD20 class is believed to be more potent than existing S1Ps at controlling MS. To make life difficult for Ponvori, Kesimta has its own Obagio head-to-head study, and it looks better than Ponvori's. In the end, different patients may choose the best drug that suits them, and many drugs are vying for share beyond the S1P and CD20 drugs, including Merck's Mavenclade and Biogen's Tecfidera and its follow-on Vumerity. And only one other item for this week the FDA approved Malinta's new antibiotic, Oritavancin, which goes by brand name Chimirza, to treat adults with acute bacterial skin and skin structure infections caused by designated gram-positive microorganisms, such as methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. With its sights set on a summer launch, Melinta aims to provide a one-and-done alternative to the current multi-dose standard for treatment, the company said in a release. The drug is a next-gen version of Melinta's Orbactive antibiotic, and has been tested both head-to-head against the commonly used antibiotic vancomycin and alongside its predecessor. A long-acting lipoglycopeptide antibiotic, Chimirza, is given as a 1-hour, 1,200-mg infusion, potentially offering clinicians flexibility to treat patients outside the hospital. That consideration could be especially beneficial to patients struggling to meet infusion schedules amid COVID-19, which has shut down or changed operations at clinics nationwide. Bacterial skin infections hit some 14 million patients in the U.S. each year, The infections cause more than 3 million visits to the emergency room annually and are the eighth most common cause of ER admissions. Admitted patients typically remain hospitalized for around four days, costing U.S. facilities $4 billion each year. And that burden the company aims to reduce thanks to Kamirza's abbreviated infusion time and volume. The FDA cleared the drug based on results from an open-label pharmacokinetic study that compared an hour-long Chimirza infusion with a three-hour Orbactive infusion. Chimirza also passed muster in the Phase three solo study, which also assessed Orbactive. In that trial, researchers pitted a single 1,200mg IV dose of Chimirza against twice-daily vancomycin in 1,986 adults, including a subset of 405 patients with methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus infection. A single Chimirza dose was as effective as 7 to 10 days of twice-daily vancomycin at 15 mg per kilogram. And that's all I have for right now. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I'll include all links in the show notes below, so please go back and check those out too. Please connect with me on any of your social media platforms and give me feedback on what you heard today. I'd love to know what you thought about the episode. And as always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast. And thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.